And we didn't know how to go about it exactly. Document examiners don't come cheap. We weren't sure who to trust and who not to trust. Dr. Martin doesn't know how to do it. So we just didn't know what to do exactly about finding an honest, reputable document examiner. Miss Terry Broadway and myself uh, visited a sick friend of hers in Los Angeles. We met a man who said that his mother could be able to help us in the analyzation of handwriting. She, in turn, told us that Mr. Henry Silver has had over 50 years' experience and that the Library of Congress, on numerous occasions, has recommended his services on the West Coast. We found, upon examination of his record, that his credentials are impeccable and that he has had many, many long years of experience in question documents. I phoned him up, and he came over and made a long, extensive study of the documents. And these were his very words. After looking at the documents, he looked up at us with a smile, and he said, This is ridiculous. You boys knew this all along, didn't you? And he summoned Mr. Cowdery over to his magnification equipment. Mr. Cowdery looked at certain identifying characteristics that Mr. Silver began to point out to him. And he said that it is my conclusion, an absolute conviction, I have no doubt about it, that Solomon Spaulding wrote this portion, which of course parallels the Book of Mormon, which is otherwise known, who's otherwise known as the unidentified scribe. And from that point, we contacted another handwriting expert by the name of William Kay. And he's had over 41 years' experience in the field. His credentials are excellent. He's worked for some of the largest uh, corporations in America. He is qualified to testify in the Supreme Court of Canada. And he's also done extensive work for Scotland Yard. He's going over to Europe this summer to do uh, some criminal investigations for some of their departments. And then, of course, last but not least, we began searching for a third expert. We wanted three experts. We came across Howard C. Dolder, and we were extremely impressed with his background and qualifications. He has worked for the U.S. Treasury Department. Now, you don't get a job with the government or with the U.S. Treasury Department unless you have tremendous gifted abilities. And Mr. Dolder worked for the government for a number of years. He has also worked with the Milwaukee Police Department, and other law enforcement agencies in America. And he has been to court numerous times on the subject of question documents. Incidentally, he's also an expert in identifying fingerprints. And we called him into the case. And he says it is his opinion, based on the photocopied reproductions, if they are genuine, if they are exact reproductions of the original, that it is his opinion that Solomon Spalding executed both works. And yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, so, I wish we had the time to go into all of this, but let me sum it up for you in terms that you can't possibly misinterpret. The Spalding Manuscript is in the archives of the Mormon Church. It will be examined this Tuesday by Henry Silver, shortly afterwards by Howard Dolder, and also by Mr. Kay if we can get him to Salt Lake City, so that they may actually see the document itself. However, the Mormon Church has made reproductions of that document and certified that it's accurate. Therefore, they work from documents which the Church recognized as accurate. Our surprise guest right now is one of these handwriting experts who came here after he found out what it was all about, because Howard did not tell you that none of the handwriting experts ever met, ever discussed it, ever knew that it was connected with the Book of Mormon, knew absolutely nothing. In fact, Mr. Silver was the man chosen by the Mormons to go over the Howard Hughes will. So it's going to be very difficult to say amen to Henry Silver for one-sixteenth of eight hundred million dollars and then say no to him on the Book of Mormon. It just can't be done. comes under the heading of being under, between the rock and the hard place. <laughs> Mr. Dolder got interested because he didn't know anything about Mormonism, never met a Mormon, knew nothing. But when he began to see what was going on, particularly since some Mormons have suggested on the radio 
and doubtless will do so at other times, that somehow or other the handwriting experts aren't experts, and that if they are, we paid them off. He thought it was necessary to make an appearance here and chat with me, and we chatted. And I asked to come down and sit in the front row because his findings were reported to the Los Angeles Times. And in the Times article, he certified insofar as the reproductions are accurate, this is the handwriting of Solomon Spaulding, the author of the Book of Mormon, not Joseph Smith and the Angel Moroni. Howard, would you stand up? Mr. Howard Golden. I'm happy to say that the reason for all this is the greatest reason in the world. Jesus Christ loves Mormons. He died on the cross for them. All these years of research and work, over the years by scholars, going back to the earliest days of Joseph Smith, 1830, people trying to bring the evidence out, and each time they have been laughed to scorn, each time what they've done has been suppressed, each time everything has been poo-pooed. Now, poo-poo is gone forever. We are now facing the document. Would you kindly unroll the Book of Mormon by Solomon Spaulding and step right up there in front of the camera and let the people see. This is the handwriting expert's opinion. That twelve and a half pages of the Book of Mormon is in the handwriting of the Reverend Solomon Spaulding. There was no angel Moroni. There were no golden plates. There they are, and Joseph Smith, Jr. is a false prophet. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is introduced for the purpose of saving men out of the world. I was in Dublin, California last week, and I mentioned that this was coming, and there was a bundle of Mormons there. I asked them to raise their hand. They raised their hand. The church forbids them to come and listen to me, so they come. I hope they'll make it official, then they'll come by the thousands. They came. I lectured, I presented the evidence on racism, I presented the evidence on mistranslation, I presented the evidence on lying in the courtroom and what happened to him. After I got all finished, I said, I have nothing personally against Joseph Smith, Jr., but if a man speaks in the name of God and he lies, he's a false prophet. And the scripture says, Deuteronomy chapter 18, you shall not respect that man anymore. That's a command. I said to the Mormons that were there, is there any Mormon here who, if this turns out to be true, and Joseph Smith indeed stole from Solomon Spaulding, claiming that it was from God, and basing his church on it, your church, if he lied to you, will you still stay Mormons? Put up your hands. One person of all the Mormons raised their hand. One. And I was intrigued. I said, you mean if he's a false prophet, a liar, a fraud, a deceiver, if he's made merchandise of all you people, still, still, you'll be a Mormon? She said, I believe. I believe. Last night on radio, a Mormon missionary called in, just came back from the field. He accused all the handwriting experts of being paid lackeys. He accused these gentlemen of being my employees, and I never knew them until Wayne Cowdery showed up at my house and said, I've got something I think you'll be interested in. Whee! 